Hello and welcome. Well, today we're going to be talking about two things that seem to be very relevant and I'm going to talk about them together, but the reality is that one is over here and the other one is over here and they will never come together. Yet, we're going to be talking about ubiquitous computing and privacy. So, let's get going. First of all, when we talk about ubiquitous computer computing, I'm sorry, it's called Ubicom. If you, you, you Google it or you look for it like that, you will see that it's been, um, you know, it's a, it's a made up word right now. And it's that it's only to tell you that computers are everywhere. And where exactly are all these computers? Well, let's take a look at this. We have computers for everything. And the issue is not that the computers are out there, but the issue is that every single one of them or every instance or every chip is actually connected to the network and it is actually giving some information out there. So what are we going to do about that? Well, the idea is that the more stuff that is connected to the network, the more convenient it is. It is really good. And here is the thing. What happens with a new technology, when a new technology is introduced, first of all, is like, oh, they discover something. So it's like shocking. Then after that, it's like expensive. Ooh, nobody wants to buy it because of course it's super expensive. Then the price begins to go down and people begin to acquire that good, okay, or that technology. After that, the item becomes so small even if it's theoretically or figuratively speaking, that it becomes part of more than one item around us. Once that happens, we don't really know where that item is and the item actually becomes invisible. That's what's happening to computers. Computers nowadays, they are invisible. Why? Because they are out there we know they are everywhere, but we don't know exactly where they are. And we actually, our mind doesn't really register that they are out there. But look at this, for example, if you have a GPS in your dog, you know where your dog is. But if somebody wanted to know where you are, they can just assume that you are with your dog. And there's a pretty good chance that they will find either you or whoever else takes care of the dog, okay? In your computer and in many other things, they are, they, everything that is connected, everything can give you very nice, very customized, very particular service. But everything that is out there also is connected and is subject to hacking. And people can get into your stuff, into more things that you care for them to know. Let's continue. So, we talk about conveniency, uh, convenience, I'm sorry just like uh, when you know where computers are everywhere. And then we ask ourselves, is there a way that I can enjoy the internet and at the same time have privacy? Well, take a look at this diagram that we have out there. You can see that the internet is in one side and privacy is in another, and they are not overlapping. Look at it as if it were a Venn diagram and you will see that either if you have use access to the internet, use or access to the internet, then you have no privacy. And if you want your privacy, then you have to avoid the internet. So what happens with this? Well, basically they are telling you, if you cherish your privacy, you should not go online. However, what's happening now with people that have grown, young people probably like you, that have grown up with the internet and networks and all this kind of massive access of information, they feel like it is okay to post stuff online, you know? How many times do we say exactly what we feel or post pictures that are not exactly the best pictures to post into Facebook? Or say our status on Twitter or say bad things because we don't care, we just need to vent. Well, I have some advice for you. Whenever you want to vent, talk to a friend face to face. You know, in all style works much better because once you say something and you let it out on the internet, it's gonna stay there forever. And that is something that you don't wanna deal with. Right now at this moment, you know, it may be simple and uh, you may say, ah, whatever, I don't care what people think. But 20 years from now, it's not gonna be like that. And 20 years from now, your information, whatever you're putting out there, whatever you're doing online right now, is going to prevail. It's going to remain there. And sadly, in many instances, it will come back to hunt you. Let's continue. So let's think about privacy. 
So I want you to think before I put the definition of privacy. What is privacy for you? What do you think it is? Do you have the right to it? What's up with that? Well, I am going to give you a definition from Wikipedia, okay? Privacy, well, it's not exactly the, uh, verbatim, but here is privacy is the ability to seclude yourself, right? To be private, in other words, but we cannot use the word in its definition, right? You're secluding yourself and you are restricting access to information about yourself or you can say who actually can have access to that kind of information. And the question that arises is, how can you protect your privacy? Well, as I told you before, the very first thing to do is select and minimize the stuff that you put online. I'm not gonna deny that it's really convenient. For example, when you have Dropbox, when you use Skype, when you use FaceTime, when you share documents in Google, like um, William is teaching us, right? Everything that we put out there, everything that is out there is subject for other people to actually look at, okay? And sometimes it's much easier than you think. And there is a lot of people that are only looking around to see how they can break into somebody else's account and how they can look at your information. And in this case, I'm talking about privacy. And I'm not even, uh, in, the, in the next slide, I will go over security. But in privacy, it's something that is personal. It's something that you don't want other people to see because it's your information. Example of this will be, for example, your medical record. Maybe you don't care that people know that you had the flu. But maybe there is other illnesses that you don't want people to know because maybe they are progressive and maybe they can deny you of applying the, you know, of um, fairness when you apply for a job or something like that. So you have to be very careful of what is out there. So be selective. Don't just put everything online and don't trust that people are going to take care of your data because the only person that really cares about your privacy is you. Nobody else but you. So you have to take care of it. So we know that privacy is then, you know, your ability or to say who has access to certain information about you or who can see you in a certain situation and who cannot. Okay? So now let's take a look at what security is about. So security is the ability to control access to sensitive or private information. So in here you're controlling access, you know, you're not deciding who. And here is the thing, you can control in two ways. You can either do it by hardware or you can do it using software, okay? This is where things happen, you know, in your hardware is where everything's stored. Well, most of it, if not in there, it's in the cloud. And worst part is when it's up there and you think you delete it and it's still there. Well, but let's go back to hardware. If you own a cell phone, which most likely you will, please be very careful when you have it out. Put a password on it. It doesn't matter if you give the password to everybody in your family because you have nothing to hide. That is fine. But when you go out, make sure your phone has a password because if you, for whatever reason you lose your phone, people will be able to gather, to grab all your information. If, if you have... Um, in your phone stored like credit card information or passwords or things like that, which many people do, then whoever grabs your phone will be able to see everything, you see? So if you have access to your hardware and you guard it properly, then people will not be able to get close to it. Now, in regards to software, that is a little trickier because you can't really see it, right? But what I can tell you is that for that, the easiest thing is just to always keep up with the patches and, and software updates. If they tell you there is a vulnerability on whatever thing, you take it seriously and you patch, okay? Um, most, in most instances, you have to patch your computer and it's, everything is gonna be okay. There's other instances, however, you know, when the patch actually causes more problems than the ones it solves. But this is not a common occurrence. It happens every so often, but then again, you know, it's better to be up to date because if anything like that happens, companies usually jump in there right away and try to solve their issues, okay? So keep your hardware close to you, right? Keep it safe and keep your software up to date. Ooh, that sounded like a rhyme, you know? Um, you know, I'm, I'm very poetic today. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so how about the ethics, you know? And uh, 
how do people and companies affect you and society? And with this, I mean, how do people that can or could access your information and companies that could or actually do access your information affect you and society? And if you really want to go into that, which probably you will if you're a computer science major, I suggest that you take ICS 170. So there is many ways in which we're affected by the actions of the companies that we trust our information to. And as people say around there, you know, Google knows more about you than you, probably than you, than your husband or wife, of course, of, of, of course. Because whatever your most deeper secrets and inner thoughts and questions, you know, that you, you are not able to articulate and ask anyone, you ask Google. And guess what, Google? is saving all that information and keeping it. So what is there to do? Okay, well, the only thing that I can tell you right now is that I totally recommend that you take ICS 170, which is ethics. If you're in an AA, in any A, in the AA degree here at Leeward Community College, you will need to take ethics face to face, you know, to um, comply with the e-focus uh, part, you know, because you will need to take an e-focus course. If you're doing the AS in computer science, then you can take any of our ethics courses as well, not just the face-to-face, -face, but the hybrids or online, because any of them will count for your AS in ICS. In any case, ethics is a great course to take, and I totally recommend it. Okay? See you around.